Christ is in our midst. Hi and welcome to the Orthodox Talk channel. My name is very Reverend Ivan Chandra. Today I'd like to talk to you about the feast day of the entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem, or as we call it, the Palm Sunday. This feast day is a joyous one. Jesus Christ enters into Jerusalem. People think that he is there to establish a new kingdom, new rule over Israel. They remembered his deeds, deeds of course. They remembered that he raised their dead, that he made many, many miracles, that he proclaimed the truths of God, that he taught them in their synagogues. They remembered how he fed the 5,000 people and then the 4,000 people again and again. He fed people. Of course, he was a desirable king because he could give them food and he could bring back to life their dead. However, Jesus Christ enters into Jerusalem for a very different reason. He wants to show all of them, all those people who wanted him to become a king, king of Israel, that they were wrong about him. And his only purpose was to bring to life the whole humanity, to establish the heavenly kingdom, to establish the kingdom of God that would never perish. And this was yet to be discovered by the people of Jerusalem. Prior to the day, Jesus Christ, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. You remember the story about Lazarus. Just yesterday, we celebrated the Lazarus Saturday, when Jesus Christ raised his friend from the dead, who was four days, four days in the tomb already. He brought him back to life, and of course, people heard about it. You just imagine uh, about the news, something like that would happen nowadays. It would be known all over the world in no time. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. So during the day when the church celebrates the entry of the Lord into Jerusalem, we are reminded about Lazarus as well. We are reminded about, about Lazarus because... Church wants us to realize that Lazarus became alive again, fully functioning. He wanted to eat, he needed food. He sat at the table with him, with Jesus Christ. We see now that Lazarus is 100% alive. He's back to life, but there is another person at the table yet, Mary. Mary took a pound of very costly oil, anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. This costly oil, as Jesus Christ says later on, was to prepare him for burial. Nobody understood yet what, what was going on. Only Jesus knew what was to happen. But there was one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. So we see Lazarus who is at the table of Jesus Christ. We see Judas who is at the table of Jesus Christ. And we see Mary who is at the table of Jesus Christ, but by his feet. And these three figures represent our humanity. Lazarus represents the people who are devoted to Jesus Christ, people who serve him, people who are saints. Mary represents that part of the sinners who not only repent, but want to make a change in their life, who not only recognize how badly they behaved in the past, but they want to make up for it. They want to change their own life for better. And Judas, of course, represents that part of people who do not want to repent, who does not want to look inside of their own heart, of their own soul. And they only want one thing, enjoy their life now. As it turned out, there were many like Judas in Jerusalem at the time. Because those who shouted, Hosanna, in five days, they shouted already, crucify him because they realized they were not getting what they wanted. They were not getting the kingdom now. 
So the entry of the Lord into Jerusalem happened on the next day. Six days before the Passover, Jesus Christ is having a supper at Lazarus' house. And the day after, he goes into Jerusalem. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. So people who came to Jerusalem, they heard, of course, about Lazarus. They heard and they knew many about many miracles that Jesus performed in his earthly life. So they thought he would become a king. Of course, Jesus did not seek any power. He did not seek any recognition. He never wanted to become the ruler, the earthly political ruler of the people of Israel. He wanted to embrace the whole world, to gather the whole world into his heavenly kingdom, into his God's kingdom. There was another fact that we need to remember. The fact is that on that very day when Jesus Christ made his entry, triumphant entry into Jerusalem, people usually picked the animals for the Passover. And in this way, Jesus Christ shows that he is the Lamb of God, picked and chosen for the people of Israel and for all people who would come to the Lord to die for their sins. So our joy today is all about God's love. God's love for his people, God's love for us, that God never left us wandering in the wilderness of our sins, but he came and he became the Lamb of God for us. He was slain, he was crucified by that very crowd that was shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. As soon as they realized that Jesus is not going to become a king, he's not going to overthrow the power of Romans. He has a different kind of a message that was not yet recognized as a message of hope at that time. Of course, Jesus Christ knew that people misread his message, that people would try to kill him later on, but he was set on his path to save us from the bondage of sin and to renew our human nature, make us anew again suitable for the kingdom of God. That's how he establishes his kingdom. Our Christian church reminds us today that we need to celebrate this love of God, that we need to understand that in our baptism, we were baptized into Christ's death in order to be raised with him for his kingdom. In order to know the power of Christ's resurrection, we need to go through his suffering together with him as well. We become like him in his death, and then we will receive the resurrection and enjoy his presence in his kingdom. This is what this feast is all about. I hope this video was helpful. If you'd like to make a comment, please do so in the comment area below the video, as well as you can ask me any questions that you'd like, and of course use the comments area. Thank you, God bless you, peace be with you all. Thank you.